We're going to move to our next school, which is the Los Angeles Community College District, the district itself representing nine campuses from a Sustainable Environment Institute, which is really exciting. And then the project is designed for a sustainable campus. Professor George Letty is the team lead. And George, I understand that you're creating these modules, these education modules on energy efficiency, on water conservation, and that these are gonna be used for professional purposes on campus, but also for student training. And that sounds really uh, ambitious and really exciting and excited to hear your presentation to learn a little bit more. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate that. I'll go to my screen share and hope that my um, Google slides come through here. Um, voila. Uh, and um, I think you can probably see that. Uh, Perfect. Let me go yep. to my show. Um, so uh, we are very, very honored and happy to be a part of Pando. Uh, the projects that we've been working on have actually been, you could say, in gestation uh, for some time. And it's thanks to Pando that we're able to bring these really to, to what we've wanted, which is two educational modules that deal with the issues of water conservation in California in general, but in Los Angeles in particular, and energy efficiency in buildings which um, I'm glad that you corrected it. We are in fact a nine campus system with upwards of 200,000 students, 5,000 faculty. We are possibly the second largest community college district in the United States. Given our scale, a lot of what we do actually becomes more significant to the extent that we succeed in our goals. When I say our, I don't mean to say the Sustainable Environment Institute alone. We are actually the Sustainable Environment Institute consist of two people, three. Uh, that would be myself, George Letty, Beth Abels, professor of architecture at Pierce College, and Zhao Bernhorf, who is, uh, works at Valley College, which is also my campus in the San Fernando Valley. In addition, our team also includes Bharat Patel from the BUILD LACCD program. Uh, he works for Jacobs, which is a design and build uh, firm, and uh, and he has lead certification in his engineering. Dr. Ruben Smith is the vice chancellor for facilities at the LACCD, and he's been very helpful, and we'll feature him today in, in setting the goals that the, the trustees had set way back in 2003 to refashion our campuses, to bring them up to date, to bring them into lead certification, that's leadership in energy and environmental design, we are proud of the fact, I think Ruben Smith would point this out, that we have the biggest concentration of LEED Platinum buildings in Los Angeles in several of our campuses. Uh, this, the module I will not talk about today that's almost complete is actually the water conservation one, but these will be featured in our Canvas shells and they can be made uh, available to anybody in instruction. They are not limited to people in the district. There is such a thing as Canvas Commons. So that's one way we'll reach a public and the other one is through Google Slides. So um, we'll, we'll continue to work on and add material to these two modules. Um, and um, hopefully we'll, we'll see them used not only in classroom settings as instructional material for professors and instructors, but also for professional development and staff education. So um, the uh, United Nations established uh, these uh, sustainable development goals and Bharat Patel at BUILD LACCD has made direct use of these in order to uh, assess and um, evaluate uh, changes in design that meet the goals that have been established some time ago. In addition, uh, we look to uh, more maybe locally in California, the role that the built environment plays in contributing to the climate crisis. Um, buildings account for 76% of electricity use and 40% of all primary energy use. We have a goal set in our district by 2030, every building shall have reduced its energy consumption and what we're aiming for is to reach net zero, as it's called, a bit of a controversial topic, uh, by the year 2040. That has been accelerated uh, in July of last year by the trustees. Um, so in order to uh, meet some of the LA County sustainability goals, um, we went through them point by point and found out that given the breadth and um, scope of what is happening in our district, we actually satisfy more than one. Uh, I added another one, which is sustainable food. And you might wonder, what does the built environment have to do with sustainable food? 
Uh, you will see in this presentation that, in fact, we have a culinary arts programs at our campuses, for example, at LA Trade Tech Campus, a very downtown campus, and at um, in our Silmar campus at Mission uh, College. Three of our campuses are actually in the San Fernando Valley and have sizable amounts of real estate around them and in between buildings. These represent a different kind of set of goals for facilities than our more urban campuses. The, the six others are very urban campuses. They're small cities that are mostly concrete. So facilities is trying very much to beautify those campuses with the new buildings and to green them to the extent that that's possible at all. Recently, November of this year, the voters did pass this um, measure in on the ballot for $5 billion in a bond to help the retrofit of existing buildings. Heretofore, the LACCD has focused a lot on new buildings, and that was the instructions from our trustees that all new buildings on the campus of certain size and larger should meet LEED gold or LEED platinum standards. That is, they should exceed what California has established for energy conservation and water conservation in buildings. So it's a, it's a good thing that the voters have passed this, and I know that now our Vice Chancellor for Facilities is going to find the ways in which this bond money will be invested in retrofitting buildings. In connection with that, the City of Los Angeles uh, and the LA Department of Building and Safety have for years now established what they call EBWay, which is Existing Building Energy and Water Efficiency Program. EBWay um, is, is a uh, 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 addresses all the buildings in the city of Los Angeles. And we are very keen to see that our efforts meet the current background compliance and future compliance standards for those buildings. It's um, a very ambitious program, but it will make Los Angeles a far greener city than what we are today. I mentioned net zero because net zero can be a bit of a controversy when one sees it sort of on a global scale. However, architects and engineers will tell you that a net zero building is quite different from a net zero concept applied, for example, uh, on a global scale. I'm referring to the somewhat uh, disappointing uh, behavior and maybe performance of large polluting companies to quote unquote offset their carbon uh, emissions by either purchasing land or protecting forests, say, in the Amazon. Uh, that has not worked out well. The carbon offset system that claims to bring net zero to certain companies is, is not what we're pursuing when we say net zero. When we say net zero, we mean that the building itself produces as much energy as is consumed and maybe even more. So we have then, in addition to that, the goal of decarbonizing our systems. That includes the heating uh, and uh, ventilation and air conditioning systems, uh, removing the fossil fuel ones and replacing them with electrification. To that end, we have actually invested quite a bit in photovoltaic solar on, on those campuses that have the uh, real estate to do that and, uh, and greater efficiency in the design and build, which we'll see today with what Bharat Patel has been able to do. So it, this is significant in California, given California's uh, status as possibly anywhere from the fifth or third largest economy in the world. So that what happens in California has consequences nationally and internationally. So what we hope to achieve in the LACCD will contribute to California's goals of reducing greenhouse gas emissions and becoming a more sustainable economy. Our vice chancellor for facilities, Dr. Ruben Smith, has discussed some of these in the on-site photovoltaic systems. This applies only to our, our solar panels. And you can see the all nine campuses here and what a difference there is between where facilities has succeeded in electrifying and creating renewable energy sources and where we still have a long way to go. Uh, now, these are all campuses of different size. So for example, East LA College is our largest campus. It has upwards of 30,000 students. Uh, Valley College is another large campus. But uh, um, uh, I want to say that uh, Mission and Harbor are relatively small. In addition to that, we also have what's called the Van de Kamp Innovation Center, which is not affiliated with any one campus, but is closest to East LA. So um, our, uh, our goals have been to establish sustainable or sustainability committees. This has been at the behest of the vice chancellor on every campus. So far, we've succeeded in doing the, just that at three of our campuses. A sustainability committee would be a committee that functions under the president of that college, includes administrators, faculty, students, and facilities. And it's to coordinate and implement the goals set by facilities at the district level. So that um, we have done that now at Pierce College, 
at West LA College, soon at Harbor, and soon at Valley. It's, uh, it's, not, it's not easy getting faculty um, and administrators on a campus to come together in meetings um, that determine these outcomes or that implement them. So that um, we have to uh, work in what's called shared governance. And that is the driving principle that allows faculty and administrators and so on to get, in a sense, credit for participating in these, in these committees, which will, in time, have larger and larger purviews. I want to also point out, um, you know, our pathway to sustainability. What we've done over the last 20 years uh, on the surfaces should be celebrated. But at the same time, I don't think that we've challenged ourselves enough uh, with our build program. I'm happy to say that, you know, we do have, uh, we did have a, a passing of green building standards uh, in 2009. We did set uh, sustainability. Uh, we had green papers in 2009, 2001. We did, you know, initiate our first standards. We do have, you know, through the series, um, you know, and this timeline, you'll see that in 2010, we had a, a lead platinum building. Great. Celebrated. 2013, uh, we had our first building that approaches 20, uh, that approaches net zero at the LA Harbor College side complex. And then moving on to ultimately last year is the passing of our sustainability uh, and clean energy resolution, where we have 35 indices that I think that we need to shoot for and that we can get to. Although our goals are ambitious, uh, I believe that they're achievable. This is the culinary building at LA Trade Tech. Uh, this is our herb garden. So this building opened in 2021 and it's, it's quickly become very popular. Uh, the one thing I like about the building um, is it gives us an opportunity to take old industry concepts uh, and transform them into new ecological and sustainable practices. So this is the culinary. So um, this is the culinary oops. building at LA Trade Tech. Uh, okay. Next slide. Ah, voila. Um, the building that uh, the vice chancellor mentioned at Harvard College uh, is the, probably the first one that has been completed that actually has a net zero status. Um, so that um, this becomes a model for our other campuses. And, and for that reason, this is a great opportunity for architects and engineers to um, implement their sustainable ideas when it comes to design and build. Bharat Patel is our colleague who um, works and build LACCD and he's worked closely with me in uh, examining what some of these aspects are, particularly when the technical details elude me. I teach environmental science at Valley College, um, but I'm not an engineer. Bharat has educated me a lot in all of us in terms of what you can do at the architectural level, at the design level, to um, uh, make a building less uh, desirous, less uh, greedy when it comes to electricity use, energy use, and to let a lot of that process happen by nature in a sort of natural way. Um, so I'll let Barrett explain. Um, this is the, um, the Manhattan uh, Beach uh, Public Library that was completed in 2015 that Barrett Patel was a major designer and uh, implemented something that is very interesting I've never seen before. It's actually called the thermal blanket concept. The thermal blanket concept is a double skin. You can see that in looking at the building that there's an external glass surface and then there's an internal one that is uh, close to two feet from the external one. In other words, there's a big gap of air between the outside and the inside of the building. When you look at temperatures in Orange County, this becomes quite significant given the demand that these buildings would normally have for an HVAC system that would cool the building. So this is something that was designed by Johnson Favreau and which uh, Barrett Patel is very happy to have solved the problem that was created by that challenge. The, the building is located, as you can see, close to the ocean in Manhattan Beach, and it has what Barrett calls a glass vitrine. It sits directly on the civic ground with a strong sense of openness and transparency. Um, I, I can't uh, emphasize enough how much I, I love this building, but I'll let uh, Barrett tell us how he uh, managed to design this. With everything exposed, it provides sparks of curiosity and a great learning opportunity. During the day, it's, a great, it's great to see out, and at night, it's great to be seen. 
Total transparent building with a high performance, minimum roof profile, thermal blanket, and seamless threshold equals open access. You can see a two foot space between the two panes of glass. This is the air barrier. This is the insulator. More details. Connection details. Well, you can see there is not a threshold. View out of the second floor. Opening day of the public library. You can see the setting of the ocean and the sun setting on, on the side of the building. If you look on the right hand side, you can see as the sun goes down, it's as a mirror finish. And on the other side, as you look to the building, you can see the transparency. You can see the great uh, photo of the library. So um, I've learned a lot from Bharat Patel. And uh, one of the things that I've come to appreciate in architecture um, is uh, really something we inherited from the modernist period in architecture, uh, that being what some architects call structural honesty. In other words, the building looks like what it is. The building does what it does. Uh, that is something quite different from the era that has followed that, that we've sadly referred to as postmodernism, where whimsy and decor and facade uh, matter more than structure and honesty. So I'm still very wedded to the idea that modern architecture is by far in terms of sustainability and in terms of environment and even ease of use and pleasure to be in are really um, much better buildings than that which we see in this era of postmodern whimsy, as I like to call it. Um, so this is our, our current team also includes actually a lot of students in my environmental science 22 class that did a lot of the research on both these modules, energy conservation and water conservation. So they will be available uh, complete with all of their parts. So they'll be available as a standalone slideshow with clips inserted. There will be a transcript that will um, allow the instructor to follow the slides, somewhat of a, of a more of a not, not so much a transcript as much as it is sort of points or uh, talking points. Um, and we'll then have the separate parts, slides, renderings, clips available as well. And all that will make part, be part of the Canvas modules, as well as the Google um, slides and uh, Google uh, Drive um, storage. So um, I'm, I'm glad that we've been able to really accelerate this process in the time that um, we have had. And it's really thanks to Pando that I've been able to encourage my teammates particularly um, uh, uh, Beth Abels and Barrett um, to uh, let's bring these two modules to, uh, a, I wanna say a semi-finished state because the advantage of using both Google Slides and Canvas is constant updating. So to the extent that things might appear out of date or might need refreshings, we can contribute and add to those. And the access will then be provided. We'll give all of the right links to Pando that they'll be able to direct you to how you can access this material. It is not um, in any way meant to be you know, copyrighted or restricted. We are a public institution and the LA Community College District is supported with California funding, with federal funding, and of course with taxes in the state of California. So we are um, very transparent in our internal procedures and we are very uh, eager to share what the public is paying for in our efforts. And what we normally do is curriculum development. So in addition to what you've seen here today, the, the Sustainable Environment Institute is also members of the Southern California Marine Institute. And we've allowed that or hope that that will allow our faculty to take students on boat trips um, and, and understand the urban ocean as it's called by the SCMI. Uh, this is an important detail because our student makeup is demographically much more like the city of Los Angeles than other institutions of higher learning. So that uh, we also are aware of the fact that many of our students are in a very precarious economic position. A substantial number of our students are actually unhoused and food insecure. So that our efforts include addressing these issues. For example, at East LA College, the architecture students are proposing to build a tiny house village on the upper deck of the parking structure to house students at East LA College. And almost be before the pandemic and now since, many of our colleges also offer students 
um, a, a kind of food bank uh, where students can go to a dispensary and pick up any number of food items that they might need um, that are available there, the way that uh, Santa Monica College has done for a long time. So this hey, is George. Chapter. Yes. Hey, George, I hate to cut you off, but we're a little over time. So we do have to be able to move into the panelists here. Uh, well, uh, well, that was my last slide. So <laughs> thank you very Perfect. much. Perfect. Um, I'll hit the escape on that and stop the share. All right. Thank you so much, George. With the amount of students in all of these campuses, it's just pretty amazing. You know, so exciting to see the potential for the scale of impact there as well. Um, Mark, I'd love to throw it to you for a question. Uh, sure. Um, so I'm very interested to kind of pick up on your last point about curriculum development. This strikes me as giving students the opportunity to see a laboratory for all these leading edge sustainability projects that could be used to grant them a degree or a certificate and a pathway to a very worthwhile job. So I'm interested in what your thinking is or what your institution's thinking is about how that can be done possibly. Yes, good question. Uh, one of our affiliated um, organizations is the Dolores Huerta Labor Institute at LA Trade Tech. And in fact, it was at their behest that we started these projects. So one of the goals in both modules is to explore the job potentials from entry level to advanced level. What are the educational requirements, degree requirements, certificate requirements to allow students to enter into the, the green jobs, particularly since a lot of our students represent what are basically undeserved, un, 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 uh, underserved communities. Um, and they are uh, far more diverse than a lot of those professions would show if you look at who they hire. So we're, we're quite keen right now, for example, in uh, increasing um, our offers that we might have for fire technology. And that would allow a lot of our students to enter into what is a very a safe job, very good job in engineering in wildlife, wildlife fire protection and in uh, working on, on building fires. Um, we have at West LA College a climate associate degree that was started by Dr. Jenna Cole, and it's the first of its kind in the entire United States for a community college to offer an associate degree in climate. Uh, we are expanding course offerings outside of the STEM silo, particularly when it addresses climate. We want to see the climate mm -hmm. curriculum spread to social sciences and humanities and not to be uh, stuck in the environmental science silo. Those are just examples of where uh, we are pushing for curriculum changes and innovation. All right, thank you. Uh, Rodrigo, let's, let's uh, see if you have any quick thoughts as well as Alex, and then I think we'll move on from there as well. Um, so in, instead of a yeah. question, if there's just any kind of quick thoughts on your end, that'd be great. Sure. I, yeah, I can hold on question. I, I think um, this is uh, just a tremendous effort that very, very few people know about the extent of all of this. And it's really just really wonderful. And um, yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing how more about how this, you know, um, trickles down in addition to curriculum into also kind of student led activities and programs and kind of the micro connections in your community. Thank you. Yeah, just wanted to yes and that and just how exciting it is for all the students who are educated, um, what role they might play in helping decarbonize not just the buildings on campus, but obviously all the buildings um, in um, all of the city of LA and LA County. All right, thank you all. And thank you again, George, for a wonderful project. Thank you.